Well, I didn't choose the Flying V because I thought it was the greatest guitar in the world. But when I was 16 years old and I played with the Scorpions and my brother was playing the rhythm guitar, I was playing the lead guitar and I was playing a Les Paul, he was playing this guitar. So when, his, when I brought a string, we had to swap very quick. So my brother had to give me his Flying V to, so we, we were able to continue. And by that time, I found out that this guitar sounded really good for me, for my personal taste. The whole hat came off, I think actually twice, because I smashed the guitar twice. And when I smashed the guitar twice, this error came off, plus that again. So I don't know how many times it has been broken, but every time I go back, it played better than that. This is the plexion I've been using for the past two years. It's hard, heavy. I'm not playing it that way for a start, which most probably people, you know, do when they start playing the guitar. But if you use this part of the plectrum, especially if it has got something like that on it, like something like that, it gives you like a kind of... So if I play something like... So it's up and down. I know that well, somebody told me that uh, a producer told me that many people can't do that because they have to go like, which is much, much harder. But unfortunately, they can't do it up and down, which gives you the speed if you need it. I put my, whatever this part is called, I put that on the strings as, uh, if you do it too much, it goes like, if you don't do it at all, it goes like that. If you just put it in the right position, it goes like. So if you hear a clean sound, it's, I'm taking it off. Well, instead of like looking into a book where it says you should play this and this and this, I think it's much more original if you just mess with, well, you know, just go all over the place. And then if you're lucky, you find a chord, I'll just mess around and go like, oh, that's a good chord, and I'll record it, and then I'll just stick to this chord. come to one of the most important aspects of playing, which is scales. Well, whatever I hear from the keyboards, I actually pick up from that. If it's a minor or a major, that's the difference in a scale. You see, like, if you go like something like... That's a major. Run, OK? If it's a minor, you go... So you can't play a major to a minor or a minor to a major. Now let's have a look at left hand tricks. By just by crossing over the E string over the A string. And if you want to, you can do it like, try to do a, a, the big band. Uh, what is it called? The, 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 I don't know if I, can, if I get it together now. It's like in, involving all strings. If I play something like, and bend the neck, at the same time, which is like kind of a channel out. Playing the 
slide when I really have to for, for a lead track like... which I wouldn't be able to do with my finger, without, I mean, without that, okay? But things like... which almost sound like a slide, but it's actually my fingers. One of the basic solos, well, one is like a very, like kind of, like a fear thing, which is kind of... Uh, with a, you know, vibrato and just holding it back. There's another lead break in it which goes all over the place, which might start up here or start down here. And it just repeats and it just like kind of goes there and maybe then it drops down there and then I put something like... Pedal, which I use like a equalizer to get different tones instead of going like that all the time, and a copycat, which is just for myself on stage, to be able to play what I need to play. Like if I, well, the, the, the main reason for the echo is that I can actually that I'm actually able to leave gaps because the echo fills out the space, which the people out front down here. So therefore, you play actually a bit more tasty. When I know the point has come, when I have to you know, take over, when the vocal stops, and I have to play a lead break, I'm gone. <laughs> Well, sometimes I'm actually aware of it. Occasionally, I know what I'm doing, but mainly I think I'm just I'm just gone. I mean, it's like like being in trance or whatever, and and I don't even know what I've played unless I hear the tape back, which like every gig we record on the mixing desk, and I take it back and listen to it. And then I understand what I've actually played, but at the at the time when I play, I don't I don't really. <laughs> 